He asks, given that the BVLOS permissions require drones with standard remote ID, how does one legally fly long-range Biden and fly drones from iFlight and GetBRC in the United States? You, you don't. Right? Like, Blunty, you, you commented you could get an exception from the FAA. You could file for a waiver from the FAA. Yeah, sure. No, the, the, you're not, like... I mean, realistically, Blunty, does the FAA given any BVLOS waivers that exempt people from remote ID? I'm not sure. I would guess Those that they have. obvious record. Guess. Like, yeah. they, they issue a lot of things we don't get uh, publicly stated, so. I would, I would be surprised. I'll say that. So the reality is that long-range flying in, like, BVLOS in the United States is... Well, legal BVLOS in the United States does, doesn't exist. I know that like there was like there are a few people who have gotten actual BVLOS waivers. There are there are. But for hobbyists, like anyone in the U.S. flying BVLOS is doing it under the radar. You can assume that that they don't that they're not doing it legally. Uh, and it's one of the reasons why I almost never, if ever, fly BVLOS. People say, well, why don't you make some long range content? And I'm like, there's no way um, to fly BVLOS. It's, it's, it, it paints way too big of a target on your back. Um, and uh, there is, there is no plausible deniability. That's the thing. When a, uh, like a law enforcement organization is deciding, and uh, by the way, the FAA is not a law enforcement organization. It's a civil penalties. They're not the FBI. They're not the Justice Department. They're not, they don't deal with criminal stuff, but they, in some ways, they investigate infractions similar to a law enforcement organization. And when they're deciding which infractions they're going to pursue and which ones they're not going to pursue, one of the things they take into account is how much of a slam dunk this case is. And if a case is just a, if the guy is blatantly breaking the rules and it's just an absolute slam dunk of a case, they're potentially going to be more likely to say, we're going to spend resources on this one. So if there's a dude and he's flying in a park and somebody reports him to the FAA and they say he's flying BVLOS because he's got FPV goggles on and he was flying behind trees. And the FAA looks at it and it's like, well, what date did this flight happen? You can't prove that what day I did it on. So was it was it today or was it three years ago? Oh, I don't know. Maybe was was there a spotter? Like was the person who put his goggles down and held the controller and appeared to be flying the drone? Was he actually the pilot in command or was there someone else flying the drone with eyes on it? Was there a spotter? And none of that information is obvious from the video. It's just an FPV video of a drone flying around. Uh, you know, the FAA might look at that and go, well, this is kind of a long shot. You know, we're not going to we're going to have a hard time with this one. But with long range. Like there's just no plausible deniability about long range. Unless you're going to try and argue that, well, there's 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 very little plausible deniability, no matter how you argue it. And so I feel like flying long range is is just too too big of a risk. Even if you were someone who was willing to try to break the rules, it's just too big of a risk. 